the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise your Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for to allow us to be able to minister to you. We ask for your blessings and the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to be able to uh, give some very nice talks to all the folks who will be coming to join us today on this Respect Life Conference. We ask for your blessings on this day. We ask that you give all of us an open heart, an open mind, to open our ears and open our eyes, to be able to see what Respect Life is all about. And I bless all you speakers in the name of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, and I bless this conference uh, for, so it may shine upon us, so that we may be strengthened to always do the will of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Deacon Omar Yardi, and it's a pleasure to be up here with you to be able to kick off our conference. A long time ago, someone very close came to me, and he was passionately disgusted with our government and how it does not protect the unborn, but even more so with our politicians who claim to be practicing Catholics and are in favor of supporting this immoral act. In his anger and his excitement, his shoulders went down, his eyes became droopy, as if he paused and choked up a bit. He shared with me how his father told him that his existence was based on a flip of a coin. When his mother was pregnant with him, his father flipped a coin. Heads, they would keep him. Tails, they would abort him. My grandfather was the one who flipped the coin on my father. I'm sharing this with you because no parent should ever tell their child that they contemplated aborting him or her. Love should go beyond making a choice to keep or cut your unborn child like a benign tumor. I am glad it was heads for my father. Unfortunately, my father will live with this wound and this memory that my grandfather inflicted upon him until the day he dies. As for my grandparents, God rest their souls. On my grandfather's deathbed, it was my father who he flipped a coin on, his son, that brought over a priest, gave him his last rites, so that way he can make his peace with our Lord. And it was the mercy of God in my father's life that got him through the spiritual brokenness of his family growing up. I remember my grandparents being very loving and caring. I don't judge them. I love them and they provided me with many happy memories. We have to remember no family is perfect, but there's brokenness and sin everywhere, whether it be in your immediate family or extended family. And it was by the grace of God that my pop turned out pretty decent, raised my siblings and I in the ways of our Catholic Christian faith. If the coin would have been tells, I would not be here today. The profound question of the day as we kick off our conference this morning is, what does respect life mean? Love. Respect life means to love. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Love means action. It is more than a feeling. It is to act, to do, to show, to sacrifice, to give. It is to be selfless, to think about others, to serve others. Of course, we cannot truly love unless we love ourselves too. What drives a mother to deliver her infant into this world after discovering from medical tests that she could die during delivery? It's love. What drives someone to have his kidney surgically removed in order to save a stranger's life? It's love. What drives a soldier during war to dive on top of a live grenade to protect the other soldiers around him? It's love. What drives a young student to stand up and face those bullies who attack and ridicule other students? It's love. What drives an older brother or older sister to be able to protect their younger siblings from the physical and sexual abuse of their parents on drugs and alcohol. It's love. Why do we stand as a church and fight for social justice, speak for the marginalized, save the innocents, protect the unborn, defend those who cannot defend themselves, and give criminals a chance, a chance to repent and lift up their souls instead of putting them into the gas chamber or giving them a lethal injection? It's all based on 
love. Respect life means to love. I can remember back about 18 years ago, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. It was incredibly excruciating torture on my body. The pain was intense and the recovery long. And if given the choice for assisted suicide, I would never choose to end my life, regardless of my suffering, even if I was terminally ill, which is the case with most people fighting pancreatic cancer. It is one of the deadliest cancers out there with a very small survival rate. But the pain was so excruciating that at times I did. I did pray for death. As I lied in that hospital bed, feeling hopeless, helpless, and profound despair. I would pray to be relieved of my pain, but ultimately it was total surrender to the will of God. The act of submission on that hospital bed, I had no other choice. My prayer became one of surrender. Lord, your will be done. I offer you my suffering for my sins and the sins of the world. Please do not abandon me and give me the strength to endure. It was the act of humbling myself with all these tubes coming out of me. I had two coming out of the side of my stomach. I actually had one going in my nose, down my throat, into my stomach to keep my stomach pumping out as well. And I also had to keep calm too from gagging and doing those dry heaves because that pipe was going down my throat. There is something to be said about Christian suffering. No one wants to suffer. And for some of us, we get dealt a bad hand and we ask ourselves, why God, why me? And sometimes the only answer I receive is, why not me? Suffering, no matter how much we wish it to go away. Even Jesus prayed for the cup of suffering to pass while there in the Garden of Gethsemane. But Jesus ultimately surrendered to the will of God. Suffering connected me to the suffering Christ. The intense pain I went through not only connected me to Christ's passion, but it also created inside of me a sense of compassion, a sense of desiring to be there, to suffer with the people in our world today. It created an empathy inside of me. But there's also something to be said for those contemplating assisted suicide. The pain, the anguish, the despair they are in. Like I shared with you, suffering, it can connect us to Christ by the grace of God. Or it can make you bitter and turn you into an atheist. When one feels hopeless, abandoned, when one is in utter pain and never really practiced their faith to begin with, that little faith that they may have, they'll completely abandon it when they are in complete despair and misery. It is hard to see prayer being answered when you are suffering. This is why we are called as church to go and visit the sick. Remind them that God loves them. Like for me, I was constantly reminded of God's love. Constantly. After four days of not eating straight there in the hospital bed, my pastor from my previous parish, he even came to me. He brought me Jesus. He brought me communion. And he took the host and lovingly broke off a small little tiny piece from it and he inserted it into my mouth. My pastor brought Jesus to me. My pastor became the visible face of Jesus to me. He made his love real, tangible, and visible while I was there on that hospital bed. So what does that tell all of us, my brothers and sisters? That we need to be the face of Jesus to others. We are being called to visit the sick, to be present to them in their despair and remind them that the Lord has not abandoned them, but is with them. People I did not even know would sit with me. These people, strangers, my priests, my family, they did not have to come to visit, but they did. And they prayed over me. That is love. My wife did not have to stay with me in the hospital, but she did. And she took the brunt of all my grumpiness too. That is love. God never answered my prayers to take my life while I was there in that hospital bed. Thank you, Jesus. But he did answer my prayers and the prayers of others to heal me from this terrible cancer that I was going through. 
I can only imagine those who contemplate assisted suicide, whether terminally ill or in the most excruciating, severe amount of pain, when you are in that much despair, one can easily become blinded to God's love. God becomes non-existent. When you do not believe that there is a higher power, when you do not believe that Jesus is there with you, suffering with you, then your suffering becomes meaningless, empty. You end your life on your terms. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 1505 says, moved by so much suffering, Christ not only allows himself to be touched by the sick, but he makes his miseries his own. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases, but he did not heal all the sick. His healings were signs of the kingdom of God by his passion and death on the cross. Christ has given a new meaning to suffering. It can henceforth configure us to him and unite us with his redemptive passion. Everything we do is based on love, on eternal love, our salvation beyond this mortal life. Respect life, what does it mean? It means to love. Love also means to defend life, even if it means giving your life in defense of life. Love also means to forgive, to seek justice, to make things right. On December 24th, 2008, some of you know this story already, there was a madman dressed in a Santa Claus outfit and he came to my neighbor's house and he killed nine members of this very large family celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of these people were parishioners from St. Louis and Sacred Heart. And while he was shooting these people, many of the family actually jumped into my backyard and ran into my home. Their terror became my family's terror. If you heard the 911 recorded calls over the news, that was actually done from my son's bedroom upstairs where the family was huddled up. And one of the last ladies who came into my home said, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Oh no, this killer was gonna come into our home and finish us off. I don't believe in owning guns, still don't. I refuse to buy one up to this day but I did not know what to do, how I could defend all of these people, how I could defend my loved ones from this guy coming to us. So I grabbed a kitchen knife and with a couple of men, we actually stayed downstairs, guarding the doorways, staying away from the windows. My mind raced with a thousand thoughts and I thought of ways of how I could kill this man with a knife in my hand while he had a gun in his and he was coming for us. I remember praying for the courage to protect my family and all of these people at all costs, even if it meant my life. I psyched myself up, telling myself, this is the real deal, this is the real deal, this is not a movie, this is not a movie. Get ready to look at this evil in the eyes and be able to stand up to that plate and let, and, and I have to do whatever I can do to keep this monster from going upstairs under any circumstances, fight to the death if need be to protect my children, my wife, and my neighbors. You see, that also means to love, to defend my family, my neighbors. That is what it means to respect life. Yes, I strategized about how I could kill this madman fast, being that I had no other way to subdue him and he already massacred a lot of people. I knew that God and my guardian angel were on my side. And thank God, it never came to that. His outfit caught on fire while he was torching the house with an air compressor, and he left the neighborhood. Once the dust settled and the SWAT team had us on lockdown upstairs in our house, I remember clearly his nephew filling his heart with rage and hate, wishing that he could kill his uncle wishing that he gets caught and gets the death penalty and cooks and fries and suffers for what he did. Evil can so easily beget evil. I can certainly understand the boy and what he was going through. Darkness and evil were present all around us. It was thick in the atmosphere. Evil 
tried its best to tell us that Jesus and celebrating his birthday is nothing but a waste of time. Evil tried its best to convince all of us that Christmas Eve is pointless. According to our catechism, 2267, we have a right to defend ourselves and the common good. If there is no other way to subdue the killer, then you take the life of the killer. But if the killer should be apprehended and locked away, and it is assured, it is assured that the killer can no longer cause harm to anyone, then we no longer have a right to take away his life. But if the killer, like the rest of us, is now responsible for making himself right with the Lord, we are called to forgive. And justice must still take place. Don't get me wrong on that. Justice must still take place when we can forgive our worst enemies who have taken our loved ones from us. And again, I hope this may never happen to any of us. God have mercy if it does and that we may never be put in this situation or retested like this. But when we can't forgive instead of taking revenge with capital punishment, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it will bring healing to the deeply spiritual and emotional pain inflicted on us from losing our loved ones. And when we can forgive in this capacity, this, my brothers and sisters, is to love. It's what it means to respect life. It's like being Jesus who forgave us for putting him on the cross, forgave those murderers who put him on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. All of us have worth, even the worst of us. If our theology teaches us that Jesus died on the cross for every sin, including murder, then it is by his suffering and death that gives every person dignity and worth. By his death, Jesus has given us the gift to seek forgiveness. Moreover, we are connected to God. The book of Genesis tells us that we are created in the image and likeness of God, Imago Dei. And when God created humanity, he said that it was good. And our theology tells us that Christ is the image, the incarnation of the invisible God. And because Jesus was human, that means all of us have worth from the moment we are conceived. The Catechism, 1702, tells us that the divine image is present in every person. This is why we respect life from conception to natural death. The divine image is present in every person. When we do nothing regarding social injustice, when we ignore the cries of the unborn or let people end their lives instead of bringing Jesus to them, then we are contributing toward the distortion of the divine image. Take our most beautiful pieces of artwork in the history of the Western world, such as the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, David, the statue. They are protected, guarded, and cared for. Why? Because they are beautiful. The art speaks to the human spirit. Shouldn't we do the same to care for the divine image in everyone? The divine image is the essence of beauty. The essence of beauty is the reason why we all have dignity and worth. Jesus' gift of his life for our salvation is because of love. If we love as Christ loves, then it is not possible for us to throw away life, end life, manipulate life through science because all of life comes from God. This is why we cannot ignore the cry of the defenseless, our children, our, our elderly, and our disabled, and those suffering from poverty. This is why we stand for the immigrants who want to provide for their families. Yes, protecting our borders is important to do so, so that way we do not implode. But we must not turn away from the real issue, which is poverty. Now, I'm only hitting the tip of the iceberg when it comes to being a comprehensive pro-life people. 
all the laws that we fight for, the discussions, the debates, bringing awareness, being involved in government to push for laws that promote life, we have to remember, it's all for love. And when we can look at respect life from this point of view, my brothers and sisters, it all begins to make sense as to why we as church continue the good fight of promoting life in our society and around the world. Everything is based, everything about the gospel and about our Bible is based on love. Jesus Christ died for us out of love. Our saints, our blessed mother Mary, they are apostles. They all lived lives based on love. When our Heavenly Father created us, He created us out of love. A child from conception is a product of God's creation, which is love. We cannot turn our eye away from human trafficking, sex slaves, child labor and slavery happening all over our world, even here in our states. We cannot ignore that we are becoming a throwaway culture of the unborn or how euthanasia or assisted suicide, which seems like the compassionate thing to do in our secular world, but it has also opened Pandora's box. Eventually those who want to commit suicide simply because they are depressed or they just broke up with their fiance it may it may become a reality when we are out there in the trenches helping people bringing them the love of the Lord we are doing the work of God this is how these immoral laws will begin to weaken and dismantle it may take a very long time but we cannot give in and let secularism distort what is good in the eyes of God. Secularism is distorting compassion, redefining compassion. It is distorting the divine image. We cannot let secularism dictate who has worth and who does not have worth. If you are a rich old man or rich old lady, you will be taken care of and you will have a dignified death. However, if you are a poor old man or poor old lady and the state is taking care of you, then it is in the best interest of the state to put you out of your misery, to give you a lethal yet compassionate injection. They will put you down, put you to sleep like an old dog. And this, my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, is happening in our world, in different parts of our world already. The more Christian love we show, notice I say Christian love, because even love is being redefined in our secular world. The more love spreads, the more people are in support of love. Love is life. Love cannot be kept to oneself. Even God cannot keep love to himself because love creates life. Love is contagious. When God is sincerely received, his love is sincerely received, it is hard to contain God's love. It must be shared. And when we see the love of God in life, it is love that calls us to protect life and respect life. May God bless you and bless our conference today.